Hello, this is Hope from Trifle Production with another Blender Quickie for Beginners. And in this uh, tutorial, I'm just going to show you how you can easily set up a scene in Blender using the free assets that come with Blender. We're going to use two add-ons that actually come built into Blender called the Blender Kits. That's the first one. And the second one is called Archimesh. And you don't have to go through the whole download process because they're already inside of Blender. And I'm using Blender 2.82. And to activate these add-ons, just go to Edits, Preferences. I've already typed in Blender Kits. Uh, just type in Blender, basically. Is that right? Blender, that's kind of strange. Type that in again. That's That was weird. Blender Kit. You type in 3D. 3D. All right, this is kind of weird. This has never happened before. Usually, when I just type in Blender, Blender Kit comes up. But apparently, it's not wanting to do that at this point in time. But just look for Blender Kit. Type that into the search bar here. Once that pops up, just click on the checkbox, and it activates it. And uh, let's type in Archimesh. This also comes with Blender. Okay, that comes up. So let's put a checkbox or check in that box and activates that one also. And those will appear in your tool shelf over here. Uh, Archimesh will appear in the Creates tab, and Blender Kit has its own tab. Now they say for Blender Kit, in order to use it, you have to be logged in. But I've been using it logged out, I haven't signed up for it at all, or logged in, it, and it still works. But if it doesn't work for you like that, just log in, sign up first, then you can log in. But if you don't have to do that, you don't need to. Now the first thing we're going to do is get rid of this cube. We're going to click on that and press delete on our keyboard. That gets rid of that. And we're going to go to the Create tab and we're going to click on that arrow and it drops down uh, some options for us here. We have like three sections here, but we're just going to ignore the bottom two at this point in time and just focus on the top one. And what we want to do with this is to create a room, interior room uh, in Blender because that's the whole point of this uh, Blender Quick Tip or Quickie is to create a scene, interior scene in Blender they can use for architectural purposes or use as a scene uh, for an animation that you'd want to do. So I'm going to click on Room here. It's going to give us a panel which is a wall. But this wall is kind of a little bit on the thin side. We want to make it longer. Let's expand then our panel here by left clicking and dragging when our arrow turns into a double sided arrow. Drag that out a little bit so we can see more of the uh, options here. And here we want to make the length of the wall longer. Click on length, type in 6 on our keyboard, enter. And that makes our wall longer. Let's uh, reposition our view here by left clicking on our move gizmo or move view gizmo and I'm pivoting around by holding down on my middle mouse button and moving my mouse around so we can see our scene better we want to make a partial room not a whole room just a partial room and we want we need more walls in order to do that we're going to click on the option here and click on that arrow to add another wall and it adds a wall to the end of the first wall once again, we want to make this wall longer. So our wall 2 is at the bottom of wall 1. Left click and length here. Type in 6 again. Enter. And we have our second wall here. But we need to close it off a little bit more. And once again, I'm pivoting with my middle mouse button. I'm going to left click and drag on, on our move, the view gizmo. Drag that down a little bit. And we're going to click on this arrow once again to create a third wall. Left click on that. But the problem with this wall is that it's pointing in the wrong direction. We want it to go this way. In order to go, have it go to the right as opposed to the left, we're going to click in our length option there again and type in minus 6, enter. And that gives us our wall going in the right direction. Now we want to create a floor, but before we do that, we want to make these walls a little bit thicker. And we have that option here at the top where you see the T. If we extend this out a little bit more we'll see thickness there. So we're going to type in there 
and type in 0.1 enter and that gives us thickness for our walls and the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to put some windows here and we're going to cut holes automatically into the walls and in order for the walls to have the holes cut into them they need to be a little bit thicker which is what we've just done now the next thing we're going to do is add a floor and the ceiling which we see those options here so floor click on that and if you click on floor and you see the option for ceiling and floor that we had before just disappear click on the wall again and that reappears that causes those options to appear again I don't know if that's a bug in blender but that tends to happen and now we're going to create a ceiling so let's click on that and we've got our ceiling now the next thing we want to do is create our windows here and those options or in the second part of the uh, Archimesh add-on when you scroll down you'll see rail windows doors which is in the elements panel we're just going to focus on uh, the windows here the rail windows the panel window that creates like uh, balcony windows or patio windows like the big door based windows where you have to, you can slide the doors open to walk through the uh, opening but we just want windows uh, that sit above the floor and that will be the rail windows and when you click on window rail windows to activate it, it's going to cause the window to appear with the cursor is which is fine so I click on rail windows and that's where it creates our window for us to move a window because you have to move all the elements of the window at the same time if you look at the window itself you'll see it has the railing there it has um, a bounding box that comes with it and has all kinds of options there that make the window what it is and you can't just click on one option and then move it at once uh, then click on the next one and move it because that's going to mess up the whole formation of the window instead of doing that click on this empty here if you look closely you'll see this line it's, an, it's actually a crosshairs that's big enough to move so let's click on that and let's click on our move gizmo and that's going to allow us to move this whole uh, setup at as one unit so I'm going to left click and drag on the blue Z uh, arrow to drag it up and we want to reposition our window to be in this corner because this is where we want our camera to face I'm going to left click and drag on the x-axis and drag this over we're going to create one more window so we're going to click on actually I'll have to click on the wall at all let's click on real window again create the second window same uh, process left click on the empty drag it on the z-axis and let's drag it over on the x-axis to go past uh, this one because we want this to be on the other side of the wall over here we're going to move this, reposition our window here, scroll up on our mouse wheel, and pivot so we can look at the window uh, head on. We want the windows to be on the same kind of level. So we're going to eyeball it, so left click and drag on the Z axis so that they're pretty much parallel to each other. It doesn't have to be exact, just somewhat. And then we're going to press RZ90 to turn it because we want this, this window to be on let me see this wall here so we're going to drag this over and kind of pull it out a little bit on the uh, x-axis left click and drag on the x-axis now at this point the windows are just sitting inside the mesh model of the wall and what we want the windows to do is actually cut a hole in the wall so that the windows actually fit in a hole in the wall and to do that we're going to left click on our wall here and we're going to scroll down and we'll see the option that says auto holes and you left click on that and it automatically creates holes in the walls for our windows to fit into properly which is what we're looking for and that's pretty much the whole setup we need when it comes to creating the uh, the uh, this corner of our room for our scene now we're going to minimize that I'm going to drag this over, reposition our window here. We want our camera to face this direction, looking uh, here, because this is where we're going to put our furniture for our scene, whether it be architectural scene or a scene for an animation. And the best thing you can do to just uh, kind of get the best angle from the beginning in terms of positioning your camera here is that you want to have 
pretty much a good amount of space uh, between, I guess you can say, the window of the user, user interface and the corner of this room. And I'll show you what I mean by this. Once we have this uh, positioned here where we can see, you know, the ceiling, the walls, the floor, and the windows, uh, we have our camera here. We don't want to have to start trying to drag our camera to get the right position. All you have to do is go to view, align view, and then align active camera to view. Click on that and voila, it's where we want it to be, just like that. And if you're if you do this and you tend to uh, it not to be where you want it to be, all you have to do is divide your scene up here. Let's hover our mouse over uh, the corner of our window here. Let's left click and drag that split the window up for us. Press T to get rid of that toolbar. Press N to get rid of that one. Uh, press 7 on the keyboard to go into the top view. And then press Z to go into x-ray view. And then you can click on your camera. Let's scroll out. Remember, this is our move move view gizmo. It's like kind of a tongue twister. To kind of reposition our view here. Left click on our camera. And just uh, hold down your left mouse button over this camera position, position. If you look in this window here and you move that around, it actually helps us reposition and minimize this a little bit more. Reposition our camera to kind of look where we want it to look. And then press R on your keyboard because it's going to automatically pivot it on the uh, Z axis because we're looking at, at it from the top view. And whatever angle you're looking at in Blender, and, and when it comes to ro rotation, it's going to rotate it from that angle. So if you're looking at it from the side, it's going to rotate it from the side. From, if it's from uh, looking at it from the top, it's going to rotate your camera from the top. So since we're in the top position, which is where we want to be, it's going to pivot our camera so that it looks and pivots on the z-axis, which is what we have here. So the next thing we want to do is use the Blender Kit, <clears throat> excuse me, to add furniture to our scene. So we're going to combine these windows back together. Once you hover over the divide divider here, left click or right click, sorry, and click on join areas, and then you'll see a faint arrow. Make sure the arrow is pointing towards your the scene you want to minimize, and and left click there, and it joins it together from that angle. And we're going to go to Blender Kit. Let's left click on that. And uh, like I said before, you don't have to be logged in. I've used it without. I've used Blender Kit without having to log in, and it works fine. You don't have to sign up. Just use it as is. And we want to use only the free only assets. So we're going to click on free only. And it gives us uh, all the free options off the bat. And the first thing we want to type in, in terms of the searching for something as a couch. So left click in the search bar and type in couch. Enter. And it gives us all these free couches. This is going to save time in terms of you have having to not scroll through all the assets in the Blender Kits. You can just scroll through the free ones and it gives you the free assets to use. So you want, let's say you want to use this couch, let's cl left click on that. And it's going to pretty much load it up and it loads up pretty fast. And it's the same concept when it comes to kind of moving uh, your assets around. Let's uh, reposition our window once again. Here's our move gizmo there, a move view gizmo. And it's, if you scroll in with your middle mouse button, you'll see that it, it, there's a crosshairs under here too. Uh, empty is what it's called in Blender. Left click on that and it helps you move the whole uh, cows, all the assets at once. We're going to pull this back. And the good thing with Blender Kit is that when it populates these assets, this furniture, into your scene, it automatically puts it on the grid level of the floor. So you don't have to try to try to figure out you know how far it is from the floor. It automatically does it for you, which is great. So we're going to left click and drag on the x-axis. And pull that towards the wall and then we're going to get a, an armchair let's left click into our search panel here and type in arm chair enter and let's just go with this one for the sake of this tutorial let's left click on that that populates it 
It doesn't take long at all. It's, it's pretty fast, which is what is pretty impressive to me. Uh, let's left click on our empty there and drag it into our scene on the X and, and Y axis. Now you can see this is facing the wrong direction. We want this chair to be up, up against this wall. And just turn it around by pressing R on your keyboard. Uh, 180, 180, enter. Oh, that's the wrong direction. Sorry about that. Control Z. Let's do that again. And if you don't really kind of uh, uh, want to type in the coordinates, <clears throat> all you have to do is, like we did the first time, left, let's uh, split our window up. T N Z from the top view. Z to go into X-ray view and just drag it on the X-axis, and you press R again and hold down Control. And what this does is that it, when you move your mouse, it turns your assets in increments, and it snaps it to those positions, which is pretty convenient. So that's a lot more easy, a lot easier, a lot more direct. And let's look at in this view. Let's look at it through our camera. So we can see where our assets are. So we have that there. Let's do the same thing with the couch. Let's left click on our empty there. And we want it to face or be up against that wall. So R again, control, and just move your mouse. And it snaps it in increments. And it looks good. And let's drag it backwards. Let's move this uh, chair out a little bit more so that it's not as close to that window on the X axis. That looks pretty good. And let's add one more element to our scene here. Let's add a lamp, uh, lamp. Sorry about that, a floor lamp. Let's type in lamp and enter. And let's see, it's not bringing that up. I think if the window is split, it has difficulty bring, bringing up the, uh, the thumbnails for your assets there. Let's join this back together. Hmm. Okay, that's that's pretty weird. Now it, that's that's one thing that I've seen with the Blender kit. Sometimes there's it just doesn't tend to pull up the assets, the thumbnails. But if that happened, just click on this eye icon and it pulls it up. And let's toggle through and see what kind of lamps we'd like to, what kind of floor floor lamps we'd like to use. Uh, that one looks good. Let's left click on that, and that's going to populate in the corner. And left click on the empty, drag it on the y axis and on the x axis. And let's put it in the corner in between the chair and the couch there. Let's zoom in. We don't need this anymore, so let's left click on that I icon to hide that. And then let's look at it through um, cycles. Let's ch change the render settings here that's for cycles. Right now it's an EV. Turn to cycles, GPU compute, and let's change our viewport. <coughs> excuse me to um, <coughs> a, <coughs> to a view different uh, shading viewport. Sorry about that. Let me get a drink of water. Now that's the issue sometimes with, or actually all the time with Blender. When it comes to lighting and interior scene in Blender, it tends to cause these fireflies to happen. You can increase the, uh, let me see, the render settings here and click on denoise in Blender, but that will increase your render times and the results aren't as good as they should be. What I do to fix that, let's go back to a different viewport, the solid viewport, is that I get rid of the ceiling that allows them more light. Let's left click on that and delete the ceiling by pressing delete on our keyboard. And I'm going to reposition my camera so that it points, or kind of, let's bring it down on the Z axis, so GZ, and pull this down. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so we can clip out the exterior of the floor because you just want to see the interior <coughs> of the of the room here. I'm going to divide the window up again and TN, 7 top view. And we're going to click on our camera, 
click on that circle and let's drag it in. And we're going to pivot it so that we can get more of the couch and less of the wall. So press R on your keyboard and just turn that around and then there you go. And we're going to change the exterior lighting, the world lighting from gray. So click on this icon, this is the world properties. And in the color tab, click on that and raise it up in brightness. And I tend to like my exterior scenes to represent the sky, which would be blue. And let's see how that looks. That, that gets rid of the fireflies quite a bit. So let's left click on the shading there to get the different viewport shading render here and see how that looks. And yeah, that eliminates all the fireflies. And let's bring, let's make this a little bit darker so you can get more of the interior lamp lights in there, a little bit darker. And yeah, that looks a whole lot better. Way, way better. Much, much better. Now to add textures to the floor because the sometimes in Archimesh it automatically adds, adds textures to uh, the elements and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but we're going to, as you can see, it didn't add textures to the floor. There's textures on the walls. That's why it's kind of a uh, off-white color. But the floor has no textures. So we're going to go back to our 3D solid viewport view, left click on the floor, and we're going to join these areas back together. We want, what I like to do is I like to have uh, the 3D, the node editor at the top so I can see, get a very better view of it. I'm going to divide that up, go to this icon there, left click on that, go to shade editor. And it's, it's tried to set up a floor texture for us, but... Uh, as you can see, it's not really working that well. This is not connected to anything at all. So we're going to left click on that, hold down shift, left click on that, and press delete to get rid of those. Uh, left click on that, press G to expand that out. And we're going to use the node wrangler to create a new uh, set of nodes to activate to use uh, with this set of nodes. <clears throat> In order to activate the node wrangler, go to edit, preferences, and click in or type in node in the search bar and put a check in this box to activate the node wrangler and once that's done left click on this set of nodes and press control T and then G to pull this up to grab this up and you can see that it's got a, a whole new set of nodes for us and I'm going to apply a wood texture to this floor to just make it look a little bit more appealing I'm going to go to open click on open and go to blender textures where I've saved all my textures I've created a folder for it I'm going to scroll down all the way down to where it says wood. And it shouldn't take too long. There it is. I'm going to left click on that and then open image. And then we're going to see how this looks in the viewport. Go to that uh, cycle shading. Give a little bit of time in there. There we go. It's bigger than it's supposed to be. And if it's too big, all you have to do is uh, left click on that press G to pull this over and press shift A on your keyboard go to converter was it converter or vector click on mapping and then it brings up this little node for you and just left click in the middle of those two and this uh, allows you to change the size of your texture in your scene now set to point so it's going to make it smaller on the X and Y axis. So I'm going to type in 5 here. Enter. Enter. Let me see. 5 again. Enter. And yeah, there you go. It's uh, minimized, made the uh, wood texture small enough to actually, where it actually looks good and it fits in the scene. And that's how you can uh, pretty much uh, make an interior scene in Blender pretty easily without having to recreate or make all these assets yourself because it automatically comes in Blender. So this was a little bit longer than I was wanting it to be but I had to try to get in as much information as possible and I hope hopefully it was helpful for those of you who are watching and once again thank you guys who have subscribed in the past, those of you who are subscribing now and those of you who are subscribing in the future and I will see you guys on the next one. Alright, adios.